So the biggest energetic shift of the summer in terms of the astrology, the biggest astrological alteration of the reality arrives here this week, just days after I'm going to release this, even less than two days. And that's two planets changing signs. Mars goes into Taurus. Mercury finally breaks into Cancer. It's not just that these are any old ingresses, they actually set up and are very important for the climaxes that are to come this summer. So let's dive in. You know, so when mapping out transits, it's often the case that there are buildups on multiple levels and fronts that culminate in one day or one little period. And I think we're living through one of those. This is what I would say maybe is the biggest shift of this summer. Mars into Taurus particularly opens up the big theme for the rest of the summer. I'll probably do a whole video about it, the fixed sign activation of summer 2022 and how it's the stop off in between these two very dynamic eclipse seasons that we get in 2022. So the first thing to note here is simply that these ingresses take place um, within 25 minutes of each other here on the 5th of July in Central Europe. It's eight in the morning between eight and 8.30. First Mars comes into Taurus at 8.04 and then Mercury enters Cancer at 8.25. And so it's a double energetic shift. And when you start overlaying big changes, um, I think that increases the odds of, the, of a palpable shift in energy. You might wanna check in with yourself on Tuesday and say, well, it's something different, something feels different. This would explain why. So first with Mercury and Cancer, how did we get here? And this is the reason why this Mercury ingress I think is more important. So there was this dance with Mercury back and forth between Gemini and Taurus. It started on the 11th of April and now it's finally coming to completion. So April, May, June, three long months of this Mercury story in between Gemini and Taurus. That ends with Mercury finally getting some new energy, breaking into Cancer. The other part of this Mercury shift is that Mercury has been so powerful. After it stationed direct, it was moving through Gemini quite powerfully, reborn as a morning star, picking up speed in Gemini. And we enjoy this very auspicious mercurial period. And instead of Mercury being strong in Gemini, it's now what we call peregrine in Cancer and it falls under the sun's beams, Mercury will now be non-visible just as it enters Cancer. And so the ability to do mercurial things, thinking, writing, talking, speaking, fun, games, children, analysis, occultism, magic, Mercury, so many things, that loses a little bit of potency. And I hate to negative project, so have an awesome, fun July. Um, but maybe the astrological symbolic injection of fun becomes more limited. Now we've got Venus still in Gemini, which is a fun planet in a fun sign. But we're losing some of that potency. And I think you see it with the news, just how serious things are with economic calamity, energy crisis, food and fuel prices increasing, protests all over the world, a whole host of crises that are kind of boiling up and then maybe coming out this summer. It makes sense that Mercury wouldn't be as strong, that the fun may be kind of taken out a little bit here as we start getting into July. We've got the Pluto return to the United States, the second pass here, I think 11 July, something like that. So it's a little bit more of an intense and serious moment. And this Mercury uh, transit reflects that, Mercury losing some power. And so let's just shift and go to the tarot. I mean, what does the tarot say? Mercury and Cancer, you have the magician and the chariot combining. The chariot is often an energy thought of as being grounded into the earth and moving with that kind of earthly rotation, grounding into these deeper understandings of reality as cancer so often signifies. And so the magic takes on a more tethered to maybe greater forces, you might say, or more primal or fundamental forces, as opposed to being in its natural, airy, intellectual state. So the two books that I will use in this video are, again, Isabel Hickey, Astrology of Cosmic Science, and then this other book by April Elliott Kent, a working astrologer today, contemporary astrologer, The Essential Guide to Practical Astrology. The thing I like about both these books is they give delineations for planets and signs. And so when we have ingresses, we can use these texts or others, there's many others, as ways to dig into the symbolism. And I think we'll, we'll be able to make connections. So let's just go and look first at Mercury and Cancer. So starting with April Elliott Kent, she has this whole thing about the sidekick, tender-hearted, fiercely loyal. She says here, the inner superhero, when it's threatened, then the tongue grows claws. And so the idea here is that the Cancer as the protective feature of cancer in the cancer archetype, you would protect vis-a-vis -vis the, the language, the word, the analysis. You know, what, what I say, see here is that these kind of fundamental realities, you're using mercurial powers as a, as a means to kind of tap in 
or root in or to protect your brood or to protect your idea set or what you want to initiate or even to protect the roots and connection you feel to the spaces around you and to the world itself and to your body itself. But you're deploying Mercury in this way. She says here, the mouthpiece, sometimes you can overthink your emotions. Other times you get so emotional you can't think or talk clearly. And I can see both of those being the case here, especially with Mercury under the sun's beams, that the kind of restriction here, the, sub, the subduing of Mercury may be giving way to more lunar and solar components, like uh, the, the spirit side of the vision of, of our reality, the mothering, home, nurture, uh, more security component. Those things take primacy and sort of dominate Mercury. Let's see what Isabel Hickey says. So uh, Hickey says an extremely emotional and receptive mind. So the focus on the emotions, um, instinctual consciousness. That's kind of what I was going for here with Mercury and Cancer. So I like that kind of using Mercury to appeal to more fundamental sympathies. Sympathies grounded in this instinctual consciousness and this kind of rooted way of being. Bring your Mercury into your relation, your, your fundamental family relationships or those close to you, even the families you choose that are not blood family. Here they, it says they are extremely psychic and find it difficult to learn by study but absorb knowledge by listening to others. I think this is very wise because Mercury is a planet of divination and astrology and magic and then so is the moon, the planet of foresight as Vedius Valens writes. This is more of a magical, intangible moment of processing and of analyzing the world. One thing about both these shifts, you had Mars and Aries, now Mars and Taurus, Mercury and Gemini, now Mercury and Cancer, both of the night sex signs. And so now there's much more of a passive receptivity with these two energetic shifts. We might find that we're less engaged with the outer and turning more inner now. That new moon in Cancer really did set up these contemplations of fundamental energies that are more internalized. So use this transit on 5 July of both these ingresses to maybe turn inward, ask yourself what you need, take a pause or a break from the excitement. Let's shift now to Mars. You know, this is the story I'm a little bit more interested in. Now what happens is Mars now comes into Taurus and it kicks off this moment I've been talking about for a while, which is a grand cross in fixed signs that defines the summer. It's the climax of this summer's astrology. There's a whole series of events in the fixed signs, but that last week of July, when Leo season begins, the sun comes into Leo. Mercury will be with the sun. That's why Mercury is important because it's traveling with the sun now. That's one node on the grand cross opposing Saturn and Aquarius in July. But then Mars, Uranus, and the north node meet in the 19th degree of Taurus very closely square Saturn. Now with Mars' ingress into Taurus on 5 July, we're setting up one of the key pieces in, is in place for this climax in fixed signs, summer 2022. So pay attention. What's emerging around fixed signs in your chart and how might that be activating in your life? Then the other component of Mars and Taurus, it's the last sign for Mars until Mars enters Gemini. We'll be there for eight months. So in some ways, this is the last moment to enjoy something different than Mars and Gemini for too long. It'll feel like too long when we're all said and done with it, I think. Um, so quickly, let's check in with April Elliott Kent, Mars moving through Taurus. She says it's not a strong sign for Mars. Of course, this is Mars's exile. So energy can move slowly. Waiting and frustration, she says. The plus side, maybe it's slowing down, making decisions, pursuing what you need with maybe a stubbornly activity and stockpile provisions. Very good for Mars and Taurus. Using the action for Taurian activity. If we go here, your values, some people will say beliefs and values. I kind of like that because it's fixed, internal fixed. It's the inside and that can often be oriented to beliefs. So um, here they say, she says, eat and spend impulsively. Conflicts may erupt over money and other resources. I really like that delineation because we're seeing protests right now over inflation, over um, energy uh, policy. There's, so there's tons of stuff happening around like conflicts over money and resources with the way the markets have been and the facts of the world. I think Mars coming into Taurus is gonna magnify those. By the time it gets to Uranus and the North Node on one August, 39 July, we could see a full combination of some of that protest, some of that martial anger. We come back to Isabel Hickey, what does she say? Well, again, she goes into this whole thing about Mars not being placed well in Taurus. I think that's an inauspicious omen for the summer. Mars is not very uh, constructive in Taurus. It has to square Saturn, conjoin the nodes, and square the Sun and Mercury. 
you know, I'm a little concerned, frankly, about the summer and these protests most more than anything that I see emerging, the economic strife that I see emerging. But she says here, extremely stubborn, jealous and possessive, focused on money and sex, focused on values that need refining. Um, again, these idea of belief systems and desire and resources coming into play. You know, Mars being afflicted, she says, tendency to resentfulness, selfishness, too strong of possessiveness. And I think we can find here with the economic turmoil in the world, people are fighting over who should have what, who, this is mine, no, this is mine, or no, you took this from me, the kind of anger that can emerge when you have these moments of economic, you know, shaky economic ground where there's lack, lack of kind of stability in the system. You're going to get a Mars response and Mars and Taurus, it would be the perfect trigger triggering Saturn and Aquarius. So much of this response is about, you know, the Aquarian uh, turn that happened in 2020, 2021, and the policymakers' decisions to flood the system with money and create inflation, not lower rates when they, maybe they should have. And now we have the consequences of that exacerbated by war in Europe and all of those other things. So it's almost like Saturn and Aquarius' changes are now um, gonna have to face some of that anger with Mars in Taurus. You know, I think that's shown quite well in the symbolism of the Tarot, where you have Mars corresponding to the Tower card. You can see the kind of breakage that can come. And then it's but, uh, filtering through the Pope, the card of the Pope, which can represent uh, institutional structures of society, the, way, the values, right, religious beliefs that are maybe enforced by institutions even economics, like, you know, in the um, times past, the church was tapped right into the economic distribution in society. And so it represented an economic institution. But those beliefs about money and institutions and society now come headlong with Mars and there's this c collision that's going to happen. Again, I think about these food and fuel price protests. I think this symbolism is shown here. And then anger, I actually saw on Twitter today, there was a defacement of a Catholic church somewhere. That's what's on tap with the symbolism this summer. The final thing I wanna uh, come in and describe here, there's two syzygies this summer in the fixed axis, two very difficult ones. And I think this Mars ingress sets these up in terms of the story of the, the fixed cross, the fixed grand cross coming into sharper focus. Remember, you've got the 28 July new moon in Leo, opposite Saturn, square Mars. And then there's this full moon in Aquarius, maybe the more difficult of the two on 12 August, very close to Saturn, very closely squaring Mars on the 12th of August. That full moon may be a combination moment of Mars' time in Taurus that begins to set up this week as Mars enters Taurus. So yeah, just take care of yourself out there. Knowing when dynamic transits are on the horizon, it's not a time to have unnecessary fear. It's a time to just, you know, if you need extra care, caution, and concern, deploy those things. Don't take a lot of risks, especially if your chart is wrapped up in the fixed axis with a lot of placements. You may want to just calm down a little bit and chill if you're able. Sometimes these dynamic transits push us out into the world. That's what they're there to do. And a dynamic time is to be embraced because it means change is coming. It's the tower card, right? You have two people being thrown from the tower, but they're being freed from imprisonment is one way to interpret that card. So let this dynamic period uh, take you where you need to go, interface with it as you're able, go conservative and safe if you're able, and maybe throw caution to the wind if you want and just ride in the intensity. That's another way to do it and just jump into this stuff and have a great, great summer.